Hi everyone and welcome back to the CompTIA Network Plus course. Step 3. Test the theory to determine cause. Once you've gathered information and established a probable theory, you've got to determine the next steps to resolve your problem. If you can't confirm your theory during this step, you must formulate a new theory or escalate the problem. Let's look into the matter by first checking the IP configuration of the host that just happens to include DNS information you can use the IP forward slash sorry you can use the IP config forward slash all command to show the IP configuration the minor the forward slash all switch will give you the DNS information you need as shown in figure 198 Check out the DNS entries 1.1.1.1 and 2.2.2.2. Is that right? What are they supposed to be? You can find this out by checking the address on a working host. But let's check the settings on your troubled host adapter first. Click start, then control panel, then click network and sharing center and then manage network connections on the left side of the screen which will take you to the screen shown in figure 19.9. Now click the interface in question, click properties. You receive this screen shown in figure 19.10. From here you highlight internet protocol version 4 and click properties or just double click from figure 19.9 do you see what may cause the problem? As I said you are using DHCP right but DNS is statically configured on this host interestingly enough when you set a static DNS entry on this interface it will override the DHCP provided DNS entry. Once the theory is confirmed, determine the next steps to resolve the problem. When the testing of a theory is complete, you will have determined if the suggested cause is correct. If you find you are correct, the next steps, next section, is to establish a plan of action to resolve the problem to identify potential effects. If the theory is not confirmed, re-establish a new theory or escalate one. If you find sorry, if you find that the suggested theory is not the cause of the issue, you should move on to test any other theories you may have developed. In the event you have exhausted all theories you may have developed, if it is advisable to escalate the issue to a more senior technician or when it involves a system with which you are unfamiliar the system owner or manager step four establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and identify um, potential effects now that you've identified some possible changes you've got to follow through and test your solution to see if you've really solved the problem in this case you ask the user to try to access the intranet server because that's what they're that's what they called about. Basically, you just ask the user to try doing whatever it was they couldn't do when they called you in the first place. If it works, sweet, problem resolved. If not, try the operation yourself. Now you can test the proposed solution on the computer of the user who is still waiting for a solution. To do that, you need to check the DNS configuration on your host. But first let me point out something about the neglected users network. All hosts you are using DHCP so it's really weird that a single user is having a DNS resolution issue. So to fix the problem and get your user back in the game just click obtain DNS server address automatically and then click OK. Let's uh, take a look at the output of ipconfigall 
in figure 1913 to see if re you received a new DNS address. Um, so here we go, IP version 4.10.100.10.58. All is good as you can, sorry, all, all good you did. All you can test the host by trying to use HTTP to connect to a web page on the internet server and even by pinging the by host name. Congratulations on solving your first trouble ticket. If things hadn't worked out so well, you go back to step two, select a new probable cause and redo step three. If this happens, keep track of what worked and what didn't so you don't make the same mistakes twice. It's pretty much common sense that you should change settings like this only when you fully understand the effect your changes will have or when you're asked to do by someone who does. The incorrect configuration of these settings will disable the normal operation of your workstation and well if it seems that someone, the user, maybe de did something they shouldn't have or you wouldn't have had the pleasure of solving the problem. Uh, step 5. Implement the solution or escalate as necessary. Although it's true that the CompTIA doesn't expect you to fix every single network problem that you could possibly happen in the universe, they actually do expect you to get pretty close to determining exactly what the problem is and if you can't fix it you will be expected to know how to escalate it and to whom you are only as good as your resources but they your own skill set a book like this other more reference oriented technical books the internet or even a guru at a call center i know it seems like i talked to that physical and logical issues that cause problems in an hour but trust me from what I've taught you you're just getting started there's a galaxy of networking evils that we have not touched upon because they're far beyond the objectives of the network plus certification and therefore the scope of this book but out there in the real world you'll get calls about them anyway and because you're not yet equipped to handle them yourself you need to escalate these nasties to a senior network engineer who has the additional expert experience and knowledge required to resolve the problem some of the calamities you should escalate are as follows switching loops missing routes routing loops routing problems mtu black hole uh, bad modules, proxy address resolution protocol, ARP, broadcast storms, NIC, teaming misconfiguration, power failure, power anomalies. So I'm going to be here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.